$1.92. That was the average price of one pound of chicken in 2019. That's almost half of what it was in 1960. At the same time, the beef price fell by roughly 20%. The world now produces more than three times the amount of meat as in 1970. All this while more and more evidence reveals that meat production has a huge negative impact on the environment, climate and human health. And here we are, more people are eating meat because it's cheap and delicious, but production on an industrial level is coming at an exorbitant price. How did we end up here? How did meat prices get so cheap? Let's take a look. On average, Americans consumed 180 pounds of beef, pork and poultry in 2018, 10% more than in 1970. Americans pay a lower per capita rate for most foods than anywhere else in the world. Less than 10% of American household budget goes toward food. Meanwhile, meat production results in carbon dioxide emission, methane and other global warming gases, and also plays a role in deforestation and the overuse of fertilizers. To understand how we got here, we need to look into the history of meat production and how it has changed over the years. In the early decades of the 20th century, in the Midwest of the United States, farmers raised animals. They would then ship the live animals to stockyards in major metropolitan areas around the country. Those animals would be processed there and later sold to local butchers, who would cut them into steaks and sell to consumers. Fast forward to post-World War II. The local butcher expanded into grocery stores, and the technology to ship refrigerated foods became available. Grocery stores started to look for suppliers that could ship the meat already processed, not the big animal pieces like before. The packing houses then moved out of the metropolitan areas and built facilities close to where animals were being raised. This was the beginning of the infrastructure we have today. At this time, the industry started to adapt to consumers' taste. Instead of sending all cuts of meat, they started shipping specific cuts. And the whole operation of raising, slaughtering and processing into something easy to buy and cook moved very far from consumers. All the streamlining that these changes demanded, contributed to making meat production more efficient and therefore cheaper. But one other development would become the most consequential change in the industry. We are talking about consolidation. Today, the American market is dominated by three big companies, Tyson, JBS and Cargill. Together, these three mega conglomerates control two-thirds of the beef and about half of the chicken market in the United States. The pork market also has one other bigger player, Smithfield, owned by Chinese conglomerate WH Group. Together, they determine prices, production conditions, and even push for regulations. The number of slaughterhouses has decreased by about 70% since 1976. From 2001 to 2019, not one year went by without Tyson announcing another acquisition. As companies got larger and production scaled up, the costs per unit decreased and created a cycle of cheaper prices, more sales, more powerful companies and consequences with a direct impact on consumers. Consolidation led to big changes in the way meat is processed. It is important to understand that the larger the plant, the lower the prices per pounding process. But a cheaper price also means significant changes in the production chain. In this reality, everyone takes a hit. Animals, workers and suppliers. Everybody has to sacrifice and suffer so the final product is cheap enough to sell millions of pounds every day while still generating big profits for the conglomerates. In the chicken industry, for example, the big companies control the entire process from chicken genetics to packaging. From 1925 to 2015 the average days to market for a US chicken has been reduced from 112 to 48 days. At the same time the average chicken's weight has ballooned from a market weight of 2.5 pounds to 6.24 pounds. With only one animal, the industry can have almost three times more meat in less than half the time. As the industries consolidated, productivity growth and optimization became the norm with a profound impact on the workers' conditions. This became very obvious during 2020, when the world tried to adapt to the COVID-19 pandemic. According to the Food and Environment Reporting Network, from April until the end of November 2020, at least 555 meatpacking plants have had confirmed cases of COVID-19. At least 49,454 workers on these plants have been infected, and 254 have died. A huge pork facility belonging to Smithfield in Sioux Falls, South Dakota, for example, became one of the biggest COVID hotspots of the sector. 
Out of the 3,700 workers, 1,294 tested positive. Jobs like the so-called gut snatchers, people who slice open pigs and pull out the entrails, require people to work in close quarters. If they follow social distancing rules, productivity would be reduced and therefore scale effects of production and prices would be affected. In the pork industry, 9 out of 10 hogs are slaughtered in plants that could process more than 1 million animals a year. In the cattle industry, a little more than 50 plants are responsible for as much as 98% of slaughtering and processing in the United States. Shutting down one of these plants is like shutting down an airport hub and has a knock-on effect impacting the entire chain and therefore on the meat price and supplies throughout the country. No matter what happens, a government always avoids endangering the country's food supply. Closing one of the giant factories never seemed to be an option, and this gives the meat lobby immense power. So it is no surprise that there are few regulations for this industry. In September 2019, the U.S. Department of Agriculture simplified the oversight of slaughterhouses where pigs are killed and processed. The new regulations changed two things. First, it gave local plant employees more responsibility for inspections. Second, it removed limits on line speed. That means they can kill as many pigs as they want per minute. Prior to the new guidelines, factories were allowed to slaughter a maximum of 1,106 hogs per hour. This limit does not exist anymore. Similar changes happened in the poultry industry and are likely to happen in the beef sector in the near future. Critics have also blamed the meat industry's mega-infrastructure for spreading diseases. In 2018, for example, JBS ordered the largest recall of ground beef in U.S. history. About 12 million pounds of contaminated beef infected with a virulent strain of salmonella in 30 states made 403 people sick and 117 were hospitalized. After the recall, less than 2% of the meat was recovered. Abuse of power is another problem that arises from the development of the meat industry. The U.S. Department of Agriculture said that JBS underpaid family farmers and ranchers in 2019 at three slaughterhouses in Colorado, Nebraska, and Texas by claiming the cattle weighed less than they did, delivering a huge loss to the families. They were fined $79,000 for this illegal practice. This amount is almost nothing for a company with net revenue of roughly $40 billion in 2019. It's almost impossible to hold these giants accountable. The lobbying abilities of these meat producers are seemingly limitless. According to the Washington Post, JBS alone has spent $7.7 .7 million on lobbying. Meanwhile, the company has won more than $900 million in government meat contracts. And JBS is not the only one wielding its power over government. The leverage that these giant meat producers exercise over both Republicans and Democrats is huge. Basically, no government official wants to collide with such important food suppliers. They have the market in a stranglehold and are able to sometimes get away with serious problems, like the environmental consequences of the production. The British newspaper The Guardian published an article in July 2020 saying that there are signs that meat giant JBS used cattle supplied from a farm in the Brazilian Amazon, which is under sanction for illegal deforestation. It was the fifth time that the company was linked to such accusations. JBS, according to the article, denied the story. In 2017, a report by Mighty, an environmental group, linked Tyson Foods to the widespread manure and fertilizer pollution contaminating water in the Gulf of Mexico. The report said that Tyson slaughters 35 million chickens, 125,000 heads of cattle every week, and that 5 million acres of corn are needed to feed all the animals annually. It also stated that this consumption resulted in Tyson generating 55 million tons of manure in one year, with 104 million tons of pollutants dumped into waterways in one decade. Mighty Earth also accused Cargill of operating a soy plantation on indigenous land in Brazil and being one of the U.S. top 10 polluters. Tyson and Cargill also denied any wrongdoing. The impact of meat on the environment is so big that the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change has already stated that human diets have a fundamental influence on tackling climate change and reducing greenhouse gas emissions. Without any changes in our diet, the IPCC predicts that CO2 emissions due to food production and consumption are expected to double by 2050. If animal-sourced food could be completely avoided, a global decrease of up to 8 billion tons of CO2 by 2050 is possible. Zero animal meat consumption might not be realistic, but there are alternatives. Plant-based meat, for example, could be part of the solution. But due to the low price of animal meat, 
these products are still not nearly as competitive price-wise. The average price for plant-based meats sold in grocery stores in the U.S. in 2019 was $9.87 per pound, 70% more than beef and even five times the price of chicken. While the plant-based meat industry is still at the very beginning, making up about 0.5% of meat sales in the U.S., the secret to success might be to copy the animal meat industry process. Hope lies in more efficiency from the companies along with government subsidies. This might lead to lower prices, but who knows? Until then, it's everyone's responsibility to understand how the system works and what is behind that very cheap pack of meat on the counter. So that's it for this video, how meat became so cheap. Since you made it to the end, stick around, click into our other videos and keep watching. We hope you liked our video and subscribe to our channel.